friends, my name is Sarah. I'm the education assistant for Dunlop Art Gallery, a part of Regina Public Library. Today, I would love to encourage you to join Regina Public Library's Level Up program and spend your summer reading, learning, and exploring. Kids 12 and under can enter to win fantastic prizes just by recording the amount of time spent reading and participating in Discover activities. You can read whatever you like, attend online library programs, visit online educational sites for museums, art galleries, science centers, and nature centers, or even explore nature in your own backyard or neighborhood. Use the Dunlop Art Gallery's passport to discover works of art and art activities. All these activities count towards your level up minutes. To join, go to reginalibrary.ca or call 306-777-6000. Today I'm going to show you some fun activities that you can explore with pencil crayons and watercolor pencils. Some of these are ways that you can also explore nature too. Make sure that you count all of these towards your level up minutes. Alright, let's get started. Let's learn how to experiment with pencil crayons and watercolor pencils. The sky is the limit. But here are some ideas to get you started. Start off by drawing some boxes on a piece of paper. They don't have to be perfect. You can do different experiments in each box and label them so that you can refer back to them whenever you need to. When experimenting with your watercolor pencils, there are many different ways to add your water. You can draw with the pencils on your page and then add water with the brush afterwards. You can also add the water to the paper first. You can also use a scrap piece of paper to apply pigment to and use a wet brush to activate the color, then transfer them to your artwork this way. When you're adding your water to your watercolor pencils, make sure you only use a little bit of water at a time. You can always add more water if you need to, but it's always harder to take away water once it's added. One experiment that you can do is try coloring with different kinds of pressure. Press lightly or heavily and see what happens. You can also create a gradient by starting with light pressure and slowly applying more pressure as you move along. Remember to try these experiments with your pencil crayons and with your watercolor pencils. Now try experimenting with using different types of lines to create texture. Hatching is where we use lines going in one direction to shade an area. Cross hatching is when we use lines in two directions to shade an area. These lines can be placed close together or far apart. You can also use other kinds of lines like dots, curvy lines, or jagged lines. You can also experiment with blending different colors together. Try layering two colors together and see what kinds of new colors are created. Try blending two colors with the gradient technique. You can also try blending watercolor pencils, leaving a gap between them, or try overlapping them too. Let's learn how to use your pencil crayons to create rubbings of interesting natural textures. This is a great way to observe the tiny details in some objects that we often miss or don't pay attention to. First, let's start by collecting or locating a variety of textured objects in nature or your surrounding. I find that leaves and flowers are always interesting to use, but you can also use other textures like wood, brick, or even different fabrics. Next, you will need a piece of paper and some pencil crayons. This technique also works with other art materials like pencils, crayons, chalk, or charcoal. Place your object under the paper. If your object is something that you can't move, like a brick path, 
Go to that spot and place the paper over top of it. Once your textured object is under your paper, hold your paper very still while you begin to lightly shade over top using your pencil crayons. If you can't see your texture showing through, try adding another layer of pencil crayon to your paper. Try this out with as many different textured objects and materials as you can. This technique is called a rubbing. Let's learn how to use the power of the sun to trace some of our favorite things in nature. This will work best if it's a nice sunny day outside, but you can also use a really bright lamp to create your shadows. Start by finding something that you want to trace. Things that can stand upright on their own will work best. This could be a plant in a pot, an interesting rock, or even things that you can't move, like a fence or a tree. If you can't find any natural things to trace, try grabbing something from home, like your favorite toy or stuffed animal. Once you've located your object that you want to trace, take it to a sunny area. Grab a piece of paper and an art material, like a pencil, pencil crayons, or watercolor pencils. Place the object near your paper so that its shadow falls on the page. If your object is too large to fit on the paper, like a tree or a fence, pick a spot that's interesting to trace. Using your art material, trace the outline of the object on your paper. Try to get in as many details as possible. Once you've traced your object, you can go in and add details or designs to it. Get creative and have fun with it! These are just a few creative ideas of how you can use those pencil crayons and watercolor pencils in your artworks. The sky is your limit. For more great ideas and resources, visit reginalibrary.ca.